All right, everybody. Hey, we're working on a 2008 Ex Escape. It's got a three liter. The, uh, the water pump is down here and it's locked up. Well, for some reason, the, there's a bolt there to get to the water pump, but there's also a bolt behind this pulley. This pulley is pressed onto the can. Uh, unfortunately, there's a special puller to get this pulley off. We're going to try to use a regular puller to get it off. I don't have the $200 puller. So let's go on and see if I can get this pulley off without damaging it. But you have to pull this pulley off to get that water pump off. The later models, they move the water pump down farther and you don't have to pull the pulley off. But on this car, you have to. So let me get some of the stuff we're going to do. We're going to take this air. We're going to take this air boot out of the way, this hose out of the way. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the battery out also to give myself more room to get in there to work. All right. So what I did is we took the battery out, the battery tray out. We took the air filter housing out over here. We took the upper hose off, the lower hose off. Now we have good room to get in here. And I have several different types of pullers. We're gonna try several different types of pullers to get on this pulley to get it off. The, the $200 puller has like this half moon that goes behind that you bolt in and do all this other stuff. But this pulley looks like it's pretty good and we'll see if we can get it off the regular pulley. All right, we got all the stuff removed. We had to look, take off that one lower hose. I have my good Matco puller on it. And we're going to see if we can get this pulley off here without using the $200 puller and without damaging this pulley. Yep, it just, I heard, I heard uh, the noise of the crack of it start to move and it's coming right off. You come over here and look right down here. See right, see right there. You can see that it's it's pulling off of that of the cam stud right there. It's not on very far at all. So now that we have that off, the problem is is you can't get to that bolt and to that bolt to get this water pump out. And actually, stay right there. The new water pump comes with the back housing. So you have to take out this bolt, this bolt, this bolt on this side to get that out. And this thing sits in there like that. So that pulley is covering these two bolts. So you have to take those two bolts. That's why you have to take that pulley off. All right, let me get the pump out, shine down there. And there's the pump right there. And we have two more hoses we have to take off and three or four more bolts, actually three hoses, and we'll get the pump off. Here's a better look on how I got the pulley on the puller. Now, as you see, I had to put one of the pins to the outside and one of the pins on the inside. And I used my crossbar and tightened up the two nuts so it would grab here. And then I had to put my flat tip on. And it's not centered, but actually that was good because it grabbed on the outer lip. It didn't do any damage to the camshaft and it came right back off. And it looks like I'm gonna be able to use my power steering puller to put everything back together. All right, here's the pump back in place. Now, the oxygen sensor wires here go on the other side of this hose. So you have to unplug those two oxygen sensor wires so you can get the pump out. You have to take the thermostat basically out to get to this hose and then take this hose off. Then it's this bolt, this bolt, and that bolt is what holds the water pump to the face. So like I said, I have a good old style uh, Mac power steering pulley installer and this is the right thread that screws into the cam. So we'll get that up next. Okay, I have my Mac power steering pulley installer, and this is the right thread. Here's the pulley. I went ahead and put a little bit of oil on this so it goes on good. So then what you do is you put this down here, and you wanna make sure that you screw the pulley in. Make sure whatever you're using is the right thread inside. This is the right thread. You screw that in all the way until it bottoms out. Now what we have to do is we're gonna to have to hold this 
here and spin this one. So right, right now I'm going to spin up the slack. Now I didn't clean this, so I know how far I need to go. So I need my 7 8 wrench, which I thought I grabbed. Let me go grab it again. There's my 7 8 wrench, and you tighten up the center slowly, and it, it's going a little sideways, that's all right. It's probably because it really isn't the proper tool for the job, and I might not have had it started straight to begin with, so we'll just go ahead and we'll just tap that side so it's back straight there we go now it's straightened back out usually you have to hold this but since the cam doesn't spin on these you don't have to worry about it on this one because the cam is locked in with the motor because the motor won't spin over but if you're doing a power steering pump you have to hold this because the power steering shaft wants to spin so you just go ahead and you just bring this in until you get to your your dirt line which that looks pretty good and you back your back your inside nut off and now of course it's has locked the inside which is a 5/8 or 16 millimeter and then this should break free and come back out and it did come back out so the whole tool is gone then you just want to take a peek inside to see if you're in the same position you were when you started you are so now the pulley's back in the pulley looks lined up with the lower pulley so now we got to get the belt on all right you have to jump the belt on there's no tension so the camshaft pulley spins counterclockwise you put the belt on the bottom and then you wrap the belt up here. I used a pry bar to help with it here. It was kind of hard to film, so I didn't. And then I had somebody crank the engine over really slow to push the belt on. Now, this is my radiator protector. I always like to put something in front while I'm doing that in case the screwdriver slips off, it doesn't poke a hole in the radiator or the fan. So this is just there to protect it as you're trying to put the belt back on. You're gonna need two people to put the belt on. It's very dangerous. Be very careful. All right, we got the escape all back together. Um, cool bottle over here. Here is it's running, water pump spinning, the belt's on, the belt's all lined up. Now with this car here, since all the thermostat is external on this car and those hoses, it's very hard to fill up. So what we ended up doing is we filled the bottle up as much as we could. And then what I usually do is then I take this hose off. I put a funnel in it, and then this hose goes to the top of the radiator on this side, and we slowly fill the radiator up with coolant with the car off. And it took the rest of the coolant real slow, then finally it stopped burping, and then this level started to come up in the bottle, so then I knew that we were full. I put this hose back up with the cap on, that's hot, got it running. This one looks like it is done. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope this shows everybody how to take a good water pump of one of You're going to need a bunch of special tools, and putting the belt on is kind of dangerous. You have to jump the belt on. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, please get a professional to do it. Please. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for watching, and please subscribe.